Welcome back to my channel. Glad you could join me. I've had a few people message me and ask, is there a program that I can edit my Nikon RAW files and also blend them into a panorama without paying for any software? Well, there is. The program is Nikon NX Studio and the panoramic program that you can merge your images, Microsoft Image Composite Editor. Now, Microsoft doesn't support ICE, as it's commonly called, anymore. Now, in the description of this video, I will put a link to Microsoft ICE. I've put it on my website stating that you get the program as is. There's still a link there to Microsoft that explains to you all about how to use this program. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to use the program today. I will show you how I use it just to blend this one set of images. It's a free program. The only thing that I stipulate to people is don't tell it to look for updates all the time because one day it might just fall over the day that Microsoft decides to put a stop to this program. The program is free for your private use. When I normally shoot panoramas, I edit my images in Adobe Lightroom Classic and I blend the images in PT GUI. Now this is around a $250 program. So some people really can't afford to pay that much when they're just starting out to shoot panoramas. Now this is why I'm doing this tutorial today to show you that if you're using a Nikon camera that you can use Nikon NX Studio to edit your Nikon RAW files and then save them as TIFF files, then open up Microsoft ICE, blend your panorama, save it as a TIFF file, and then when you've saved the panorama, save it in the same directory that your RAW files are in, and you will see that it will pop back up in NX Studio and you can finish off editing your panorama. Now remember, once you've exported your images from NX Studio, they become TIFF files. And when it gets re-imported into NX Studio, some of the tabs will not be available to you anymore. So let's start editing our photos in NX Studio. Now these images were taken with my Nikon D750 in 2016 with the kit lens 18 to 35 mil. You can see it's quite a nice stormy scape. It looked really nice that day. I'll just choose the middle image here, number three. I'll double click on it and automatically it just closes up the thumbnails. And if we look on the right here, you can see all the panels are closed up. The reason I've closed them up is to show you clearly which panels are only available if you're using raw files. The other panels you can use if they're TIFFs or JPEGs. So you can see the picture controls, the white balance, the exposure compensation, active delighting are only available for raw files. This is very crucial when you're editing your image. Let's start with picture control here and it shows the picture control was set to vivid. We'll change that because I actually prefer using landscape now. So we'll choose landscape. I'll come down to the white balance and you can see that the original value was set to 6,200. Now I can click down here and I can choose any one of these that I want. So it looks a very cloudy day. So let's pick cloudy. That looks quite nice. Now, what I want to do is just warm it up a little bit before I go any further. So we'll just increase the temperature a little bit. So just like in Adobe Lightroom, we have a color picker here to choose a gray portion of the image. So if I click on that, and I come up to the top here and I hover the gray here, if I click on it, there. Now this is telling me that this is correct now, but only because where I've clicked on the image, I've told it that it is neutral gray. Now that looks quite nice. I'll bring it to the greens just a little bit here. Now remember, you can always come back if you feel that it doesn't look right later. We'll leave the exposure compensation alone. We'll hit active delighting, and at the moment the value is set to off. I'll click it on normal. And what active delighting does is it tries to balance out the shadows and your highlights. Set to normal, it's doing an average. If I go and select high, can you see it's trying to flatten the image out a lot more. There's less shadows, less highlights. The image becomes very flat. The more you increase the active delighting, the flatter your image is going to be. It'll look like a painting. Remember, an image is three-dimensional. It should try to show three dimensions. Your shadows, your mid-tones, and your highlights. So we'll go back to normal. That looks better. Now we come up to adjust brightness and color. We can see here by a histogram at the top, it looks very well exposed already. So there's no real need to adjust the brightness. We'll increase the contrast a little bit. It's a stormy scape. Let's add a bit of grunge to it. We'll increase the saturation a bit. 
Now highlight protection can only go one way. In Lightroom we can go two ways but in NX Studio only one way. We'll tone down the highlights. Now the shadows we can increase them. So look at that. That looks so much better. Remember in NX Studio you don't have the option of having grad filters, radial filters and all that. So these are the only tools you can use so you've got to maximize these tools to your advantage. So after this panel here I want to come down to camera and lens correction. I'll scroll down and what I want is just vignette control. I don't want this one here, lateral color aberration. I'll unclick that. In vignette control, if Nikon NX Studio recognizes your Nikon lens, it will affect with the vignette. Now if we unclick that, you can see it's very slight, but look what happens in the corners here. It's just gotten lighter. Now this is something that you have to pay attention to because you're going to be merging these images one after the other. So if you can see when you click vignette control that it's taken too much off, that the outside edges are too light, then unclick it and see what it looks like. Because I don't know which lens you're using. So some lenses have got a heavy vignette, others don't. If I unclick this, you can see that on this lens here, the Nikon 18-35, this is the full frame version of this lens, it doesn't have much vignette. So I don't need to use vignette control. Another lens, you might need to. This is all up to you and up to the lens that you're using. For the time being, this is what I'm happy with. It looks quite nice. Now I just want to increase the saturation a bit. So I'll come up here, I'll slide a little bit more saturation. Now this is something that I normally wouldn't do if I was in Lightroom because when I bring my panorama that's been merged back into Lightroom, I've got all the tools available. But in NX Studio, a lot of these features are grayed out. This looks really good. Now I'll just come up here to the top left hand corner and say view thumbnails. This is our thumbnail that we've worked on. It looks much warmer than the others. So now I want to copy all the settings from this image to the other six. You can, if you want, highlight all your images together and edit them, but it means you're editing six images at one time and you're gonna slow down your PC. Better off just editing one image and then synchronizing all those settings to the others. The way to do it is you go up to the top editing panel up here. We have File, Edit, Browser, Image, Adjust. You click on Adjust and you say Copy All Adjustments. This will copy all the settings, like synchronizing the setting. Now, I use the control key and select the other five images. I come back up to the top to adjust and say paste adjustments. And there you go, all the adjustments have been done. At this point here, if I look at it, think like, oh, okay, it looks a bit too warm, it looks a bit too cool. Before I do the panorama, I can adjust my white balance. That looks pretty good. Now, what we do is we select this last image here. So now the six images selected and we go export. This is our export panel here. We definitely want to export TIFF. I just leave change image size. No, all I want is just 8-bit TIFF. Now I will select the directory that I want to save them in. And this is where I want in NX Studio, edit a panorama. I select select folder and export. You can see down the bottom here, it's saving the images. Now that the images have been saved, let's open up Microsoft Image Composite Editor or ICE has in short. Here's the program. Remember I said you say you don't want it to look for updates. So you go up here to the wheel, right up the top right here, see options? And in the options, you uncheck the box, check for updates each time I start. And I've unchecked it. We'll cancel out there. We select new panorama from images. Here are images, we select the first one, select the last one. We click open. On the right here, we have simple panorama or structured panorama. Structured panorama means it's more than one row. Today we're just going to leave it very simple, has a simple panorama, it's just one row of images. We click in up the top here, see step one is import, step two is stitch, we click stitch. Now I'm just going to make it so that it fits this frame here. Now this doesn't make it bigger or smaller, it just depends on the screen, it just gives you the boundaries. Here is where we can straighten our panorama up. You can see it's just leaning slightly to the right here. So I come down to the bottom right hand corner here. We'll straighten the horizon out. I'm happy with that. On the right here you can see these are all the different ways that you can blend your panorama. For a normal panorama like this, the one that I've found that works the best is Mekator. 
I use the same system when I'm using PT GUI for this type of panoramas. You'll find that Mechator gives you your best result. So we choose Mechator. You can see it's just compressed a little bit. Some of these settings stretch it higher and the clouds, or if you're shooting the Milky Way, it looks exaggerated. So Mechator is the best way. The next step is crop. Now I can crop the image. You can crop later, but I'm just going to crop just to start the image off. I don't want any further than that. I don't want this tree on the left here, so I'll crop it down here. And I'll come down from the top here. Now if I was doing this in Lightroom, I wouldn't have to be so picky because I normally take it into Adobe Photoshop and if there's a bit of the corner missing, I can use Content Aware to replace the corners. But remember, we're very limited in the editing that we can do here. We have to get it right. And I'll bring it up from the bottom here a little bit. Actually, I'll bring it back down to about here. Now you can see here, I've left a little bit of a gap in the bottom right hand corner. The reason being is when I get back into NX Studio, I might decide to crop the panorama even more. We'll leave it at that. Now we just select export. It says here the scale is 100%. The image format that I want is TIFF. I clicked on export to disk and I choose where I want the image to go. And you see, it's, it's telling me this is where I've saved it, but I don't want it there. I want it in set one. So this is the name it's going to be called CNP0596 stitch. We click save. Now it's saving our panorama. That's it, done. When I go back into NX Studio, it's there. It's already been re-imported back in. So we double click on it now. There's our finished panorama. We can see right in the bottom right hand corner here, it, there's a little bit of black. But here now I can decide how I'm going to crop my image. These days I like cropping my image just like a video, 16 by 9. I come up here to the crop tool, this crop tool here, I click on crop and it says here free crop. I don't want free crop. I can choose what I want and I can choose up here 16 by 9. You can see I've got the little crop tool here. Now I can start anywhere. It doesn't really matter where you start and I can just open it out. Now I can reposition exactly where I want to start. Keep going down there. I'll try to end up so that the buildings and the bridge look very symmetric. So I'll just crop back a little bit from the right here. Can you see now that this black spot in the corner here doesn't really affect me, but I'll bring it down. I'd like to have as much of that walkway in there. That looks really good. I click proceed. That's it. At this point here, can you see that a lot of these panels here now, they're grayed out. Picture control is grayed out. White balance is grayed out. Exposure compensation is grayed out. Active delighting is grayed out. That's why I said at the start, all these are only available if you're using raw files. Now that it's a TIFF file, it could be a JPEG. They won't be able to be used. If you feel you get to this point and you look saying, my white balance is wrong, then stop here. Delete the file, go back, adjust your raw files, adjust the white balance, and then start the process over again. It's not a race. What you want is the best panorama that you can produce. Now, I like these colors because it's not too blue. This was taken at sunset because you can see all this red hue here. The sun is just setting over the horizon. You're not going to see much blue here because the light is reflecting on the clouds and it's hitting the foreground here, giving us an orange color. The one thing that I can do is I can adjust the colors separately. So like if the blues are not blue enough, I can do that. And I do this in lightness, chroma and hue adjustments down here. So we scroll up, you can see we've got a midline here. So this is all neutral. Now, if I want the reds here to show up a bit more red, I can just come up here and increase it. The blues up here, if I want the blues to increase, I grab the blues and just increase the blues a bit. The greens, if I want the same thing, I can come into the middle of the greens. I'm happy with this image. Now I just click export, bring up my panel here. Here you can choose whether you want to save to TIFF or to JPEG. From here, I normally just save as a JPEG because it's a finished product and here is where I would save it for sharing in social media. So we select JPEG, 100% quality, it'll save to this directory here. We click export. Before I did this video today, I went back into Adobe Lightroom and just grabbed the six files and then saved them as TIFF files and used PT GUI to blend them. And now I'll just show you the difference between editing this panorama in Nikon NX Studio and Microsoft Ice and Adobe Lightroom and PT GUI. Now the white balance is different, but I want to show you what the image looks like has a panorama, how well they blended together. So this is 
our panorama with NX Studio and Microsoft Ice. And this one here is using Adobe Lightroom and PT GUI. The white balance is totally different. There's a lot more details in the clouds, but that's because I can use a lot more tools in Adobe Lightroom. But I'm very happy with what Nikon NX Studio and Microsoft Ice can get. If I felt that this image, like I stated quite a few times, is too warm, I could easily fix this by going back and making the RAW files cooler, adjusting my white balance. This looks really good. Microsoft Dice has done a really good job and it's totally free. You haven't outlaid a single cent for these two programs. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this tutorial, leave it in the comment box below. I'll do my best to answer your questions. If you enjoyed the video, give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. It really helps me out. Stay safe, enjoy your photography, especially your panoramic photography, and I'll see you next time.